and uh, I think it's a beautiful place. Now, um, I have one long ponderous poem that's uh, a bit overwhelming, and uh, it goes way, way, way back in my own history. It was written sometime in the second half of the last century. And then I'll have two poems, which are very recently uh, visited upon me by uh, the depth of happiness and inspiration. And this one huge ponderous poem is inspired by um, uh, four little boys uh, of grade school age, and they're in the backyard of uh, a house, and everything's proper and fine and kind. And uh, they are in a sand pile, and they're having a discussion. And the discussion, you know, it's really uh, got some uh, something to think about. What is better, a movie or a dream? Hmm. Well, one little boy says, well, you know what? Uh, movies are best because if you see a good movie, if you see a good movie, you can catch the infield bus downtown on Saturday and, and uh, you can see it again for 25 cents. Yeah, yeah. Well, so that's what we do all the time, isn't it? And um, another little boy says, oh no, it's much better to have a, a dream. And this is a beautiful, wonderful dream. And uh, then you wake up and uh, don't be disappointed because when the next night comes and you're falling asleep, you can go there again. So this uh, poem I've entitled, To Draw Within the Seeing of the Mind's Eye. I could explain a dream's refrain and listen for our children's advice. When being there was of a state of mind, it was said that fate, instead of leaving you better than dead, had given repose, adjusted your tie, and tickled your nose, and left you awake groping. Oh, wasn't I really there? When the next night came, so goes the refrain, pick it up there, and you'll go there again. Though so that I did do, the dream made it plain. I had brushed the dreadful curtain aside, and what a nightmare world I saw, in purplish grays with black black for gloom, a scrim of prancing pterosaurs, and hung just like the deadly doom, dancing in the careless breeze, and lifting up in uh, clever teeth, revealed a gorgeous earthly rift, cathedral spires and granite cliffs, and little people living there like elves behind the castle wall. But where it was, I thought I'd been this tiny town that knew no map but had a name in Deutsch or Dutch, some foreign tongue. It might have been a wine, a cheese, or maybe the bread. And they took me round and touched their tiny hands all over the laughed and sang. And their voices mingled down into the granite gorge and little trains would take us there, and jeweled cars bring us out again to see inside the great cathedrals carved into the stone, their most precious place, they said. They said, oh, we'll take you there for only two bucks to see. Yeah. Two bucks to see, yes, to see their hallowed, hallowed chair. No small sense of mystery would grow had it really appeared, I thought I'd seen it through the door, colored gold and red and green. Like devious little kids, they flit about. I seemed to be their happiness. Alas, I had just 60 cents. They said, oh, next time, friends, you'll come again. For now, we'll take you home. So in the jeweled car we went, all slipped upon the gradient and fell, fell into that tragic gorge. I heard no song for screams. Screams said I, if this be death play on, I must have fallen a thousand days before I'd heard, it's just a dream. 
upon the ghastly curtain fell and all those ghoulish reptile forms that reappeared in rather um, stylish norms in silk and burgundy and brushed my face but more the eye that dwells within but to draw within the seeing of the mind's eye comes off a little square, impossibly vain, approximate some touch they might have left on me about to see the hallowed chair and hear the whisper of names. I, um, every now and then something comes along and I write it and uh, I said, what's this? <laughs> Am I to blame for these words? <laughs> and then I realized, you know, that I might have achieved a moment of balance. Stasis, the old Greek word, but it means balance and it's good. Uh, so, here are these two poems that appeared over the last month, and uh, yes, I wrote them, and I'm to blame for what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> of one moment, of one moment. One comes and goes, not even a minute. Could be a glance of light through certain levels of paint. Others may seem a circumspect as the dusty globe in the library. <clears throat> Look over this moment, appreciate the gleam of a pure thing a little dusty and worn, but here at a present, at a point in time, the breath of seconds and minutes it takes. This poem might be a celebration of, of the season. December night, low sky, December night, the deepest of winter is near. There seem to be changes around. A signpost wobbles in wind, as if in the code, a message is told, reflecting the light. But nothing's forlorn, the night is deep, as the earth will turn, the ages go by, sad sometimes though, in a glorious dream, a mystery dark and proud. Thank you very much.